Hey, welcome back to JG3 Reviews, and I've got another fountain pen that I want to share with you today. And it might even look a little bit, at first, like the pen from last week, the Hero 565, but that's not what this is. When you look closer, this is a much different pen. This is the Bauer 100. And I was uh, looking at pens weeks and weeks ago, and uh, kind of on another pen shopping spree, but inexpensive Chinese pens. I kind of have a thing for inexpensive Chinese pens, if you haven't noticed. And one of the reasons is, one, I kind of like to save a buck, uh, but two, I like quality that comes at an inexpensive price. And I think a lot of you probably do as well. Now, I like a nice pen, and I've, I've, I've got a nice Lamy that I'll, I'll show you here uh, in a couple of weeks, but, I also really like just a pen that I can get inexpensively, use the daylights out of that pen, and uh, have a great experience, but without having to have a great investment. And so that's why you'll hear me call these uh, more often inexpensive Chinese pens, because actually the quality is often not cheap at all. That kind of has a negative connotation, but they are inexpensive. Affordable might be an even more positive way to put it, right? But the Bauer 100 is a pen with an interesting design. So I'm going to do a close-up so that you can see all the different elements that go into this pen. It is one that has a good weight to it. It, it, it feels much above its price point, and it writes above its price point. So Without any more of that talk, let's spin the camera and look closer at the Bauer 100. Let's take a look at this pen. There's a lot going on, and one of the first things that you will notice is the cap. The cap is really where almost everything is going on. It's, it's a pretty high, highly stylized cap for just a, a normal, average, everyday fountain pen. You'll notice that it has this slant at the top, and uh, it, like some other pens, has uh, vertical grooves. Uh, formed into the cap. These are stamped into the cap and a stamped uh, clip. The clip uh, also has some style going on. One thing I like about it is uh, some Chinese pens borrow heavily from other pens, the, the Parker 51 and 45 and others. And if this borrows from another pen, I'm not sure what pen that is. So if you've seen a pen that looks like this that doesn't say Bauer on it, you can mention that in the comments, but so far I've not been able to find reference to any pen that might have inspired it. And I like that. That means that this is a pen that Bauer designed out of their own uh, imagination. And I, I like that. I, I, I think it's good as every time that the Chinese market moves further into just coming up with their own designs, I think that's a good thing. Even though I do kind of like some of their homage pens, I still like the originality better. So. There is that. Again, uh, black lacquered pen. They do offer this in other colors. This is the one that, that I just thought uh, caught my eye the best. You'll notice also that on the band it has the Bauer logo and name etched into it as well and uh, the Model 100. So that gives you an idea of what the pen looks like uh, all the way around. It's, it's a nice pen and it has a nice feel and the quality of this pen you feel immediately. It really is a good quality fountain pen. Uh, I have uh, right over here, I have a Parker, it's a, the Parker Jotter and I really like this pen and it's a good quality pen. It's a light pen and so weight wise it's different materials. It's not because of any lack of quality. Uh, weight wise it's quite different but I would put that Bauer 100 right up here with that Parker, no problem whatsoever. And uh, I actually like the, the heft of this pen a little bit better. Let's look at it. It has a good snap to the cap. I like that. It has the plastic sleeve inside. I've not had pr any problems whatsoever with this pen drying out in the time that I have had it. Uh, it once you take the cap off, you'll notice it does have this groove around the uh, hooded semi-hooded, sharp mouth, sort of a hooded uh, feed. And this, which by the way, also has a really good quality feel to it as well. This helps that cap snap on. The only complaint I would have about that, there's a little bit of a step down and that's not bad, but that groove is right where I tend, I hold kind of high on the feed and sometimes even up around the band. And so I really feel that, not bad, not bad at all because it's really smooth, but it just, it feels kind of funny to me every now and then just because I'm used to a lot of hooded nibbed pens and none of, none of my others have this and so it just 
it feels like I'm, I'm not holding the pin in the right place, like I have my, my hand further back on the band or something when I don't. Uh, so that's just a thing to know. It's not bad. The hooded nib is interesting. It writes really well. This is a fine uh, to extra fine. I'll show you here in a second. And it does have like this little shark mouth sort of a, an opening with uh, kind of a, a metallic finish inside uh, that's shiny. It doesn't go all the way around. It kind of stops halfway up and fades out. Uh, but an interesting, different kind of a, uh, of a hooded nib. There are other pins like that, but it's just not as common. So that's, that's kind of interesting. If you, if you like the look of that or don't like the look of that, that's, that's up to you. The pin, let's open this up. You can hear that that is a brass pin. Uh, you can't really see that in there. I don't think I can get a light well enough to show, but it is a metal pin. And it does come, like so many Chinese pins, with a converter. And uh, let's just all thank the Chinese for this nice consideration because I think it's awesome every time. And uh, still got the label on this one. Works well. It's, it's just a standard Bauer converter. It's nothing fancy, but I've had good luck with them. No problems, no leaks, no seal issues. Uh, so I have no complaints and I like a good piston uh, converter. So it is international, so you can use international cartridges. You can use international shorts like the Caveco short cartridges, which I like Caveco ink, so, so that's handy. But mainly, I use bottled ink anymore, and I have this filled up with the uh, Noodler's Midlight, Midnight Blue that is right back there. So always a wonderful thing when a pen comes with the converter. All right, so now we've looked the pen over, and uh, I do really like the pen. Let's see how the pen writes. Okay, so let's see how this Bauer 100 writes. Again, I like this pen. I like the look of this pen, uh, the feel of it. It's uh, Last week I reviewed the Hero 565. That's a bigger around pen, and I really like that. Uh, this one is a little bit thinner, uh, but, but weightier. Uh, so it just kind of depends on, on what you like. This is, again, a Bauer. 100 and uh, this one is a fine nib and I think as you can see it writes fine I would say that it's just this is dead on for what I consider a a fine pen to be and it seems to be across paper types and things like that it just is a good pen it writes smoothly and uh, you know, not all fi fine pens write as smoothly. Uh, some have feedback. Feedback is not a bad thing. I like a feedback that is kind of like a pencil. So that's that's kind of my own preference. And this one is is kind of right in there, although a little bit smoother than that maybe. I'm going to write the numbers. I, I'm getting in a habit of writing the numbers with my mouth shut. That way you can kind of hear uh, how it writes on the paper and compare that to some others. Okay, so you can hear it has a little bit of feedback, but it is not scratchy. Uh, there's, there's no scratchiness to this at all. I've had no hard starts, no skips, no problems with the pen drying out when unused. Uh, as you can see, uh, there's, it's putting down a, a good amount of ink, and uh, that ink dries up fairly quickly, as you can tell, uh, with most pens, and especially with a fine pen. And that's kind of one of the nice things about a fine nib, is uh, that it dries a little bit quicker, which can be important depending on what you're doing. Uh, I use a fine a lot of the times in my planner uh, because I'm flipping pages and I'm looking at the whole week at a time a lot of the time and trying to, to write across several days, and I need to be able to flip that page uh, soon. And uh, one thing one thing about a fountain pen, sometimes you have to wait for the ink to dry. Uh, I don't consider that a problem. That is just the nature of the beast. Uh, let's see here. This is a familiar to viewers of this channel ink. This is the Noodler's Midnight Blue. And I mentioned in the last view, uh, video that this is a, a household favorite among uh, my family. We, we like this and it's just a great, great ink. It's dark, uh, and yet it has, as you can see, beautiful blue shades, uh, yet dark. And I like that, and just a, a nice ink. It, uh, it flows well. 
So back to this, uh, the Bauer pen. I, I am really enjoying writing with this pen. And one of the things that I like about it is there's a little bit, as you can see, uh, it's, it's, a hard, it's a hard steel nib, but you can uh, coax a little bit of variation. I'm not pushing hard at all. Uh, you don't really want to do that with this. That's not what it's made for. Uh, but there just kind of is. And the ink lends itself to that. Uh, the faster you write with this ink, the lighter the blue. It never gets light blue. But you can kind of see here, I guess the camera hopefully will pick this up in the letters here. With a fine, you can go right quickly and you can start to get some color variation. And this, this ink lends itself well to that. I like that. So that's, uh, that's the Bauer 100. And it, is it a recommended pen? It is. I really like this pen. This would be a great gift pen. Uh, like so many others I, re I review, uh, this comes in at just a few bucks. And I'll put a link in the description to show you where I got mine. You can shop around and, and find it. But you're not going to pay a lot of money for this pen, and that's what I like. There's kind of a myth out there that to be able to have a good fountain pen or even a good-looking fountain pen, a nice presentable fountain pen, that you must spend uh, just bukus of money. And uh, that's, that's not true. That's a myth. Uh, there are some wonderful pens out there at good prices. Now, yes, this doesn't give the same impression as a $900 Mont Blanc pen. But you know what? Uh, that's, that's fine. Different people, different pens, different stratospheres, things like that. But you should never think that you have to spend that kind of money to get a pen that writes really well because there are some great pens out there everyday pens and and inexpensive pens that are going to impress you beyond uh, their price tag and sometimes really impress you beyond their price tag and the bauer 100 is one of those pens it's a it's a company that's been around for uh, like 80 years and they know what they're doing and they make some really great pens they make some cheap pens but they make some great and expensive high quality pens and this is one of those be sure and like and share share the video with somebody you think might be interested in this pen and come back again next week for another review god bless you and have a great week